So here's how I would learn cloud computing if I was to start from scratch today. After about two and a half years of experience working in cloud and having interviewed many cloud professionals with years of experience and years of industry knowledge, I've come to this conclusion. If I had no knowledge of cloud and no tech background, this is what I would do. In this video, I'll be laying out some clear and simple steps to help you understand the path that I would take to learn cloud and perhaps help you do the same. By the end of this video, you will have a complete blueprint to start your journey in cloud computing. And if I didn't do some of the things that I'm mentioning in this video, I wouldn't have been able to learn much about cloud and have worked as a cloud engineer. Let's get right to it. Now, the first thing I do on this journey is to create myself a learning plan. Without a clear, structured and well-informed plan, it will be very difficult to learn cloud because cloud is not just one thing. There are so many different technologies involved in cloud and there has to be a plan going into this. Now, when you're building your plan, you need to build it according to two main things. And the first thing is the cloud provider you choose to work with. And as you probably already know, the cloud provider that you choose to work with will be either of these three cloud providers. It will be Azure, AWS, or Google Cloud Platform. As I always say, there are other cloud platforms out there, but if you wanna work in cloud, these are the ones that you need to focus on. They are by far the most used platforms. And the reason you need to decide on one of them before you create your learning plan is because certain companies might focus on one of them and only use one of these things. So regardless of which one you choose, you need to focus on one and the surrounding technologies of this one platform so that once you've done a lot of learning on this platform and the surrounding technology that is compatible with this platform, you'll be able to get a role at a company that works with this technology. Recruiters will be looking for people with specific skill sets. So if I was starting from scratch and creating my learning plan, I would choose one of these three. Now, the second main thing you need to consider when creating your learning plan is the cloud role that you're going for. As I mentioned already, cloud is so broad and there are so many roles within cloud. For example, there are cloud administrators, there are cloud security engineers, there are cloud DevOps engineers, cloud support engineers, and many more roles. Each of these roles require different skill sets. So when creating that learning plan, you need to understand which role that you're going for so you can look at the skills needed for that role and implement that in your learning plan. Once you've done your research and created a well-structured and well-informed learning plan for yourself according to your cloud service provider and the role which you'll most likely go for, you will be in the perfect position to enter step two. Without learning the fundamentals of IT in general, there'll be a lot of gaps in your learning when it comes to learning cloud. Cloud involves a lot of different things. It's not just its own thing. So you need to understand the fundamentals. It involves hardware and software and networking and operating systems. The cloud is a technology that is integrated with so many other bits of technology. So knowing the fundamentals of IT in general is so important. So now let's quickly move on to step three. And if I had mastered this step earlier on, my cloud journey would have been so much easier. And this step is cloud training and certification. Now there are several things that you need to consider when doing your cloud training and certification. And by the way, these things should be already written out in your learning plan. What cloud training you're gonna be doing, what certifications you're going to be doing. And there is one thing that is super important, and that is the platform you're using to do your training, to do your courses and understanding, and to prepare for your certification exams. One thing I emphasize when talking about the platform you're using is you need to use a platform and study courses that have loads and loads of labs that you can follow on with these courses. If you're not doing the thing along with learning the thing, then you are going to fall behind. So I emphasize this greatly. You need to be doing labs along with learning the content on these courses. And also when learning the cloud, it is important to use a platform that teaches up-to-date technologies. And that's actually where Zero to Mastery comes in. Zero to Mastery is a platform that helps learners at every stage of their journey, from beginner to getting hired, to advancing your skills for a successful and rewarding career. For my AWS learners, the platform offers full courses on cloud certifications like the AWS Cloud Practitioner and AWS Solutions Architect Associate. They take you step by step from the fundamentals all the way to mastering advanced cloud technologies, along with practice exams that will get you ready for the real thing. But let's be honest, learning alone can be really hard. And at some point you'll probably get stuck. That's why Zero to Mastery offers access to their community of over 400,000 students, alumni, mentors, and instructors, helping you every step of the way and ensuring that you meet your goals. One good thing about Zero to Mastery is that they update their courses frequently to ensure students are learning the most relevant content. They have loads of courses, so no matter what area of tech you're interested in, this platform can probably help you with it. 
and check out Zero to Mastery using the link in the description of this video. And thank you to Zero to Mastery for sponsoring this video. Now, once you know what certifications you're going for, you have your platform that you're using to do your courses and training, then we can talk about the fourth step on learning cloud. And this step is massively important, and that is learning scripting and automation. I've looked at so many job descriptions for cloud roles, and I have spoken to so many individuals who work in the cloud. There are very few cloud roles where you will not face some form of scripting and automation in your role. Infrastructure as code is super important in cloud roles and understanding different IAC tools is super important for learning the cloud. Now, everyone knows that I am an Azure engineer, I'm an Azure guy, and therefore PowerShell is a super likely tool for me to be using in my role as PowerShell is one of Microsoft's tools. But another popular tool when it comes to infrastructure as code and scripting is Terraform. So if I was starting again, I personally would focus on these tools. There are other tools out there. A lot of companies use Python for scripting. There are tools like CloudFormation and there are loads more. But for me and my journey, especially using Azure, I would focus on PowerShell and learning Terraform. Now we know a lot about PowerShell, but the good thing about Terraform is that it is a cloud agnostic tool. So it works with all three of the major cloud providers and, and I'm not sure if it works with others. I actually need to research that. But yes, Terraform works with AWS, it works with Azure, it works with Google Cloud, which is pretty cool and why it might be a really good thing to learn. It is very widely used and there's even a certification for this tool. And that's why it's one of the things I'd put in my steps for really learning the cloud. And once I have some well-rounded training in cloud and I understand scripting, I would probably go on to this next step. And this next step is super important for the current age we're in. So step five is learning AI. And you might think, is there any need to learn AI? It's not cloud, so why would I learn AI? If you're often on LinkedIn, you've probably seen the wave of people learning AI. You've seen people talk about AI courses that they're doing. You've seen people post about the fundamental AI course they just passed. And yes, I am one of those people. As we always talk about in tech, it is important to keep learning what is relevant right now. And AI, especially generative AI, is super relevant right now. And if I was to start from scratch, as part of my learning plan, I would be learning something about AI. I would do a fundamentals course like the one I did recently, the AI 900, which is the Azure AI fundamentals course. And it really gives you a good understanding of generative AI. Now you might ask why exactly I would learn AI and why should you learn AI if you're going on this path and this roadmap? And what I would say to that is that AI is heavily integrated in different cloud platforms nowadays. And when I speak for Azure and Microsoft 365, the use of Copilot for generative AI and loads of other AI features and models are definitely big parts of the cloud and are used a lot more by companies in the past few months and years. Now, am I saying that you need to learn and fully understand everything about AI to be able to work in cloud? Absolutely not but having a fundamental understanding of AI can definitely impress recruiters, employers, and hiring managers. When senior executives are meeting and talking about the future of tech and of companies, AI and generative AI is likely the thing that comes up the most. So why wouldn't learning AI and being able to put that on your CV not be a benefit for you? Once I've done all my learning, I would move on to this final step that would bring all of the other steps in this video together. And that step would be building your personal brand. Now people get really confused when they hear this. They don't really understand what it means to have a good personal brand online. Does it mean to be like Caleb? Does it mean to be a YouTuber on the internet, run a podcast, interview people? Absolutely not. Of course, I do have a great personal brand through doing YouTube and other things, but this is not what I mean when I say it's one of the steps in this video. Now, for me, I think the best way to build your personal brand is to optimize your LinkedIn profile and share what you're learning on LinkedIn. When you do a new course, talk about what you learned. When you get a certification, celebrate that with your connections. Optimize your profile to show your skills. And this, in my opinion, is the most simple way of building a good personal brand. Connecting with recruiters, hiring managers, and other professionals and aspiring professionals in your field, and sharing what you're learning and what you're doing on your journey. This could be regular posts anytime you learn something cool, or it could be other things. But not only does this step help you to stand out in a crowded job market, this step can also lead to job opportunities coming without you even applying. 
if there are people online that know you, especially recruiters, they can now reach out to you rather than you having to apply to so many places to get that role. So for me in learning the cloud, I would be building my personal brand as well, sharing my understanding, sharing what I'm learning, sharing the courses I'm doing on LinkedIn. And hopefully this would lead to more opportunities in helping me to stand out. Please remember that I've shared various resources for your learning in the description of this video. And finally, to further your journey, you need to go watch one of these two videos. Hurry up. What are you waiting for? Go on, click one of these two.